Hey everybody, KC here. Uh, good to see you. Glad to be back. Hope you had a good final week of August. I certainly did. It was nice to have a little time off, uh, but I'm back in the saddle, raring to go. And uh, listen, there were a bunch of things that happened over the past week, stories uh, that I could have used for my first FaceTime of September. And most of them kind of uh, fell into the uh, kind that would allow me to indulge my inner Howard Beale and howl at the moon and rant and, uh, and get angry. And uh, I decided, I don't want to do that. I want to start off September in a, in a more mellow mood. Uh, so I want to focus on kind of a good news story, a positive story that I read in The Atlantic. And it was a column uh, by a fellow named Arthur C. Brooks, who's an expert on the subject of happiness. And one of the things that he, he, he writes about in this particular piece is what he calls the ultimate happiness diet. And uh, one of the things he writes is this. A great deal has been written lately about ways of eating that increase longevity and improve health. Debates rage around the virtues and drawbacks of certain restrictive and regional diets, including such varieties as old-school omnivore, lacto-ovo-flexitarian, hadn't heard of that one, uh, Mediterranean, and Okinawan, hadn't heard about that one either. These discussions are interesting and important, but usually leave out one important question. What diet makes us happiest? And what he says is while what we eat clearly has an impact on our well-being, it's how we eat that really can have an impact on our ultimate happiness. And he goes on to say that for most people, the best happiness diet is one balanced across a variety of foods and emphasizing proteins and fats over carbohydrates, avoiding junk food and sweets, alcohol consumption be, should be um, basically moderate at best. You want to avoid obesity, uh, but not to the extent of going on a crash weight loss program that mimics starvation and makes you miserable. Your eating should be organized around regular formal meal times rather than eating on the run or foraging all day long. Meals, this is the important part, meals are best taken in the company of others. Brooks writes that this to me sounds all very Spanish. Over the past 35 years, I spent a great deal of time in Spain. I married into a Catalan family and have lived in Spain for long periods. As with virtually everywhere else today, a good many people eat poorly in Spain, especially among the young, sadly. Still, the typical Spanish diet remains a sound model, consisting of a varied, balanced menu that is rich in proteins and oil, olive oil and moderate in carbohydrates and alcohol, which is generally only served with meals. Starvation diets are unheard of in Spain, and they probably haven't heard of Ozempic yet either. Um, basically, what happens is, the most important thing here is that Spanish people rarely eat alone. Meals are emphatically social occasions, which is why they take a long time. That ultimately is the recipe for happiness. And I think this is such an interesting observation. You know, you know, in the food industry, there have for a, a long, long time been conversations about why it's important for people to have meals together. Um, it used to be many years ago that they talk about there should be one family uh, meal day or one family uh, meal week a month. They talked about the importance of uh, socializing kids and making sure they got better grades and got along with their peers better and, and probably would do, uh, would be less prone to things like uh, uh, drugs and, and probably even violence these days. They didn't talk about the violence that much uh, when, when they started talking about it. And they've sort of expanded that out in terms of talking about the impact on kids. But it seems to me this is a really important um, revelation by Brooks that we are happier when we eat together. Uh, that the, the notion of food as medicine, we talk about that a lot, but in some ways the best medicine is to be around a table with people you love, people you care about, people with whom you can enjoy the meal, and the food actually becomes somewhat less important than, than the community nature of it. It's why I've always thought the best parties always center in the kitchen, because people are hanging out in the kitchen, they're doing stuff together, uh, there's conversation, that's really important. I know for me, that's always made me happy. But reading this story uh, makes me think that this is something the food industry needs to focus on more. It's not just about kids, all the kids are important. It's about all of us relieving anxiety in our lives, making us happier. Anyway, that's what's on my mind. And as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.